Imagine you had to bake a cake. You had to add the ingredients in a certain order and then mix them well. Now imagine you had to bake a thousand cakes and you had to do it all by yourself in one hour. In this analogy I used, your cake is an Azure resource such as a virtual machine or a storage account and you needed to deploy your complex application which consists of hundreds of resources and you had to deploy that same application across multiple regions. How would you do this? Infrastructure as code is the process of defining what you want in your application once using a domain specific language and the system will automate the deployment of your infrastructure resources. In other words, you tell the system once what ingredients you want in your cake and the number of cakes, and the system will do the rest. Hi, my name is Satya Vale, and presenting with me is Alex Frankel, and we are excited to share with you some of the great investments we're making to improve your infrastructure as code experience in Azure with Project Bicep. We have a bunch of folks from the product team on the chat, so if you have a question during this presentation, Feel free to post it on chat and one of us will answer it happily. So I wanna start it off by talking a, bit, a little bit about what is BICEP. BICEP is a declarative domain specific language that really simplifies your experience for describing what Azure resources you want to have created. Since it's a direct mapping and compiles to Azure Resource Manager, any resource in Azure can be created using BICEP and you get to use all the great platform integrations and benefits. BICEP is an open source project, which means any one of you can make comments, can contribute, and even see our backlog of capabilities. One of my favorite parts about working on BICEP is that we have some of the industry leading technology and language experts such as Anders Helzberg, the founder of TypeScript, Mark Rusinovich, and Brendan Burns all actively involved and contributing to this open source project. And we hope that you can join this growing community as well. Over a year ago, our team spent time talking to over 90 Azure customers in one-on-one -on -one conversations. And one of the top pain points was how challenging the existing ARM template language was to learn and author. Our telemetry also showed us that a ton of resources created declaratively in Azure were done using ARM templates and our customers really wanted a better experience. We also wanted to ensure that new users coming to Azure had a great experience creating resources and spend less time worrying about infrastructure and more time building great applications. During our customer research, we tested a few different language approaches. We showed a prototype which involved enhancing the existing ARM JSON language. And while that was an improvement for customers, they still felt that some of the quirks with JSON around verbosity of the templates was still a big challenge. We also then tested going down a programming language approach like supporting TypeScript and Python. But one of our findings was for our target audience, these languages were really complex and had a steep learning curve. The last option we tested was, a new, was the new BICEP language, which resonated really well with our customer base and it met some of the key goals that we had when we set out on this project, which was simplicity, modularity, and readability. While there are some good infrastructure as code options in the market today, we wanted to spend some time sharing some of the benefits you get by using an Azure native solution like BICEP. One of the first big improvements is around the syntax. The BICEP syntax is much simpler when you compare it to the JSON equivalent that we had before. Some of the improvements we brought to the BICEP language include, you can directly call parameters of variables and expressions without a function. There are no quotes on properties, which is something that I, I like a lot myself. Um, simpler resource declaration when using positional properties. Uh, so you don't have to type common property names such as the type or the API version explicitly. And we also ensure that we can handle some automatic dependency management in certain scenarios as well. This is another common ask that we heard from our ARM templates and is something that we addressed in the BICEP language. Many of our customers have a need to use the newest services or features available in Azure, including preview services. Because Azure resources are modeled in ARM, one of the inherent benefits you get 
is having ARM templates and bicep support from day zero. So as soon as a new feature or a service is launched, you can be guaranteed to have ARM template or bicep support. And now with over 300 Azure services and this number growing every day, if having day zero support for all Azure resource types and API versions is important for you, then this is something you should consider. All of us like to reuse things, whether it's a water bottle or code samples from Stack Overflow. Bicep modules are reusable resource declarations which can be used as building blocks to describe your infrastructure. This is one of the big asks that we got from ARM template customers, and we're really glad to be able to support modules as part of Bicep. We also plan to have support for both private and public modules. Private mod modules will give you the ability to share your modules with teams within your organization, and public modules are content that is created by the community, which can be used by all. One thing that I've learned as an ARM template user is the importance of toolability. Without tooling support, it's like assembling furniture without a manual. Kind of possible, but extremely time consuming and frustrating. We have a great VS Code extension today for Bicep, which provides rich validation and intelligence. For example, in Bicep, we have intelligence on get properties, something that we don't even have in ARM templates uh, today. This is something that we know is key to your success and is an area that we are continuing to invest heavily in. We know tooling is a key part of our success with Bicep. The fifth differentiation you will get with Bicep is focus around our integration with other Azure services. For example, Azure Policy, which is our governance and compliance service, will execute a Bicep template to remediate a non-compliant resource. You can also write your custom Bicep remediation action and have it automatically executed as part of Azure Policy remediation. Many of our customers still use the Azure portal to create resources. For customers looking to make the transition to Bicep, you'll be able to use the template export portal feature to get a pre-built Bicep file to automate the creation of those resources in your resource group really simplifying your, your experience to transition from using portal to create resources to using infrastructure as code. Another new capability we're introducing later this year is called Deployment Stacks, which will help you perform safe deployment practices such as rollback, locking of infrastructure resources, and versioning. All these capabilities will be automatically supported for BICEP files as well. Finally, one of the biggest benefits we hear from customers that you get with Bicep is that, is that there's no state management. All your environment state is stored in the Azure control plane and you get the most real-time view of all your resources. I know I shared a lot of information with you today on Bicep, but to give you a test drive of what that experience is like in Azure, I'm gonna hand it over to Alex Frankel. Alex, take it away. Thanks, Atia. Um, so before we get into the demo, I wanted to set a little bit of context for where we're at uh, in our BICEP release lifecycle. So we started out in late August with our 0.1 release, and that was very early on in, the, in, in our development and uh, uh, very basic in terms of what you could accomplish in BICEP um, compared to what you could do in an ARM template. Um, but it we wanted to get things out as fast as possible so you all could get a sense of how we were thinking about the project, why we were doing it, and start kicking the tires as early as possible. Um, and you could see kind of where we were headed in terms of how we were structuring the file and the types of keywords and types of syntax that we would be introducing and simplifying. Um, but it was very, very primitive. With ODA2, uh, the big thing that we did was started consuming all of the Azure type information. So all the resource provider teams, they publish these REST API specifications. We now consume those as part of BICEP. And so we can give you much richer validation and, and really rich IntelliSense as you are authoring. And you'll see that uh, in the demo if you haven't already played with BICEP. Uh, we also introduced modules. So Satya mentioned how important modularity is to us. Um, uh, in terms of the goals of the project. Um, and so we introduced modules and people have already started doing some really awesome things with modules and some other features like code formatting and, and quality of life features like that. 
With ODOT 3, what we're really driving towards is enabling production usage of BICEP. Um, and in order to do that, in order for you to be able to move all your ARM template usage into BICEP usage, we needed parity. So we needed to make it so that there, there was nothing that uh, you couldn't accomplish in BICEP that you can do in ARM templates. Uh, the big things are loops and conditionals. So we'll demo loops today. Conditionals have been out for a little while. It's been in part of the, the 0.2 releases, um, but loops are, are basically brand new, so we'll walk through how that works. Uh, it's integrated with Azure CLI and Azure PowerShell, and basically what that means is instead of having to transpile from BICEP to ARM template JSON yourself before deploying, we'll do that on your behalf. So if you create a deployment with a BICEP file, we'll know to turn that into an ARM template prior to sending it to, to Azure. Um, you can still always transpile it yourself, but if you don't want to do that, you no longer have to do that. Uh, we have a decompiler now, so in order to help you move from ARM to BICEP as easily as possible, we have a decompiler. That is a best effort process. At the end of the day, it is always machine-generated code, um, uh, but it will get you started quickly. And then the VS Code tooling for BICEP makes it easy to rename uh, 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 identifiers and, and things like that pretty easily. And perhaps most importantly, uh, BICEP is now supported by Microsoft support plans. Um, so if you have an issue with BICEP going forward, you can open up a support case and they are fully trained. So they will be able to help you um, get unblocked or troubleshoot or identify bugs that we need to know about. Uh, you can always go to the GitHub repo. We love when you go to the GitHub repo. Um, but if you're looking for uh, a more kind of uh, tracked uh, support experience that you're used to, you can do that now with, with BICEP. Okay, so for basically the rest of the time, uh, I will just be demoing all the cool new capabilities that the team has built. Um, so I'm going to switch over to VS Code and then pick it up, pick it up there in a second. Okay, we are in VS Code, um, and we'll we're going to start walking through all the kind of new cool Bicep capabilities. Um, so let's start by creating a file, not in this folder, uh, called appplan.bicep. And we'll see as soon as I create the file, the BICEP language service kicks in, VS Code identifies it, and that's because I have the BICEP uh, VS Code extension installed. You can go and get it right now. Um, and uh, because that's running, uh, IntelliSense and validation and all those things are going to kick in. Um, so let's start with the basics. Let's create a basic uh, app plan or server farm resource. So I start with the resource keyword. Um, there's a few top level keywords uh, in BICEP. Then I give it an identifier. Um, so I'm just gonna call this app plan. I could call it my app plan. I could call it foobar. I could call it whatever I want. Um, and then when I type space, it knows the next thing that I need in this segment is the type of the resource. Um, so it's pulling up all the resource types, all the resource providers, all the API versions that exist in Azure. Um, and that is where us being a transparent abstraction really manifests. Um, so I can search for server farms, which is what this resource type is called. And then I just do equals and then uh, uh, an object. Um, the resource requires a set of top level properties, just like you see in ARM templates. It's exactly the same as what you would see in ARM templates, but very similar to what you see with other tooling that interacts with Azure resources. So I need a name, so I'll call this app plan. I need a location, I'll call this resource group uh, location. So I don't need to hard code this, hard code this, I'll just inherit it from the resource group. Um, I need a kind, which in this case I want to be Linux. And I need a SKU, which has a name. So I'm getting all of this from IntelliSense. I need a name, and the SKU is going to be B1. And then the last thing I need is a property. And the property I need is called reserved true. And that's something I need to do to make sure it's a Linux uh, app plan. Um, now, this is, this is a basic resource. Uh, this is valid, uh, which the BICEP tooling is telling me. And if I want, I can just um, transpile this. So I can do BICEP builds and then app plan.bicep, and it will turn it into the relevant JSON. So I can look at these side by side, 
and if you've played around with bicep this should be very familiar it's just translating the bicep into arm template code uh, we can get a little more complicated so I probably want some of these things to be parameterized so I'll add a parameter the keyword there is param it follows a very similar structure so I'll call this name prefix and it's of type string and what I want is it to prefix the, the name that I've set here. So I'm going to use string interpolation and I can just start typing name prefix and it just pops it in there pretty easily. And then I probably want to parameterize the skew. So I'm going to say param skew string, but I'm going to say this is equal to B1 and that represents the default value. So I'm going to replace B1 here with skew. Um, and, and that's all wired up. So this becomes effectively an optional parameter that I can override at deployment time. And then the last thing I'm gonna add here is an output, and that's to get the, uh, the app plan's uh, resource ID so that I can create websites on top of it. So I'm gonna say output plan ID, and that's also gonna be a string, and that's gonna be equal to app plan, so I'm making that reference to the identifier that I set up earlier, and I'm just going to say at plan dot and I get dot property access as I would expect in any uh, good programming language. And I have lots of properties available to me, but I just want the ID. So I'm going to output the ID. I'll save that. We can build it again and get a sense of what this looks like. And you'll already start to see some of the complexity start to show up. So we're using string interpolation. So there's some formatting going on. And then I'm getting the resource ID. So I'm using the resource ID function in ARM templates. This was the only, or this was the main way that you would create a resource ID. And now we can just generate that for you pretty easily uh, with much simpler syntax on the bicep side. Now we have this app plan dot bicep file, but we want to deploy this to a resource group. Um, so uh, what we'll do next is actually consume this bicep file as a module. So I could take this and deploy this on its own, and I could target it to an existing resource group. And what it was common was that people would uh, create the resource group out of band. So they would uh, create the resource group with PowerShell or CLI, and then uh, in another CLI command, they would take the template and deploy it to that resource group. That's fine if you want to do it that way, but what, one thing we've made a lot easier in BICEP is the ability to create the resource group and then deploy resources to it. Um, so we don't need this JSON file. Let's delete that. And let's create another file called main.bicep. And this is really going to be the starting point for our BICEP project. And so the first thing that we're going to add is a keyword called target scope. And target scope basically tells Bicep, where is this file going to be deployed? And it uses that as a hint to understand uh, the validity of modules and the resources in this scope. And so it uses it for, for all sorts of validation. The default is resource group. And that's why we don't need to set it for app plan .bicep because that's going to target a resource group. Um, but we do want it to be subscription in this case because what we're going to do is create a resource group which exists under a subscription scope and then we'll target the module to that new resource group. So we've set target resource group or we've set target scope and now we want to create another resource which is going to be our resource group. So this is pretty straightforward. We'll search for resource group. We'll pick the newest API version. And resource groups are simple. They just need a name. So we'll call this a.frank.bicep. And they need a location. And for this, we're going to use the deployments location. Uh, ARM templates have a location, or ARM template deployments have a location. We'll just use that so we don't need to hard code that here either. And then we're going to have uh, another keyword that we'll see for the first time called module. And a module is just a pointer to another bicep file. So we're going to say module um, app plan deploy. I could call this whatever I want as well. And then when I type space, I even get IntelliSense on what files are uh, uh, neighboring this file or what folders are, are surrounding it um, so that I can easily just hit enter on app plan and then uh, another equals and another object. Um, I'm getting some validation errors because I'm missing some properties. So let's add those. Uh, I need a name. Um, 
this is the name of the module, not the resources in the module. So I'm going to do app plan deploy here as well. And the next thing I need, so it depends on is not required, but I can set it. Params are required. We'll come back to that in a second. The third one, scope, is basically saying that this module needs to be targeted at a particular scope. And the bicep tooling is telling me that that type that it's expecting is a resource group. So I needed to give it a scope that represents a resource group. And conveniently enough, we just created one. So if I do scope colon, I see that RG shows up as a, a valid thing that I can choose from. And I can just select that and it knows that this is going to be the scope for this module. And then params are required as well. These are the parameters that are declared in the bicep file. So these are um, any required or optional parameters that I need to set. And it knows in appplan.bicep that there are two parameters that were specified. Name prefix, which is required because it has no default value, and SKU, which I can override, but I don't want to override, so I'll just leave that alone. So name prefix, we'll just say a.frank here as well. And now this is a deployable um, bicep file. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can build with the bicep CLI if you want, but now that we have this integration, you no longer have to. And so what I'm going to do here is actually perform a what if. I'm going to, I'm going to do a preview of what this deployment is going to do. So I'm going to do az deployment sub create because we're targeting a subscription. And I'm going to do dash f, which represents the file that I want to point it to. And then I'm going to do main.bicep. So I'm not pointing to the JSON file, I'm pointing to the bicep file. And I'm going to do dash L, this is the location of the deployment. And then I'm going to do dash C, which is uh, the ability to confirm with what if. And so what it's doing is it's transpiling, it's taking the bicep, turning it into JSON, and then it's taking that ARM template JSON and comparing it with what exists in Azure. So it's asking Azure, do any of these resources exist? If they exist, what do they look like? And then we'll do the diff accordingly. Now, these are uh, new resources, so I'm not expecting to see any updates. I'm expecting to see the green that we're seeing here, and, and that represents new resources. So I see uh, my resource group, and I see my server farm um, and everything looks as expected. Mostly everything was hard coded, so there's no real surprises here. So I'm set to go. I can just say yes if I want to deploy this. We're going to keep adding to it. So I'm going to say no for now. And let's just clear this out and make this a little bit smaller. OK, um, so we're going to have a, an app plan but we want uh, a website, most likely, to sit on top of it. We don't want to plan just sitting there doing nothing. Um, so we need a website uh, bicep file as well. I very conveniently have this good ARM templates folder, which very conveniently has this uh, website deployment. Um, so it has some parameters here, which we'll see in a second, but basically it's a simple website deployment. And it uh, is a container-based website deployment. So we're going to pull from Docker Hub to deploy this website. Now, I have this perfectly good ARM template JSON. I don't want to sit there and rewrite everything. So we are going to decompile it. So we're going to use the uh, bicep CLI that's packaged with AZ CLI. So we're going to do AZ bicep. And the com command is going to be decompile. And I do dash F. And it's going to be good arm templates site.json and we'll decompile it. And so this is going to create a site.bicep file and it's totally ready to go. I literally don't need to make a single change as long as I'm good with the names and things like that. And it's a valid bicep file. So let's take this and let's put it in the main directory of our repo. And now we have site.bicep. So let's wire these things together. We're going to have another module. We're going to call this site deploy. And now we're going to point to site.bicep. Same thing as before. I need a name. We'll call this site deploy. I need a scope, which is still going to be RG. And I have params, but different params in this case. So I have a few more here. Um, and again, all this is just coming from IntelliSense. I, have, I need my app plan ID. So I need to tell this website which uh, app service plan I want to target. And to do that, I just reference the app plan deploy module. And I do dot outputs. And I do plan ID, because we set that output for ourselves earlier. 
Um, I need a name prefix, so we'll do a dot frank here as well. And I need a Docker image. So which image in Docker Hub are we going to use? Um, this is uh, just called Nginx demos slash hello. They have a nice little hello world image that we can pull from. And we're going to use the latest um, uh, tag for that image. And now this is ready to go. So this will create that the app plan and this will deploy the website on top of that app plan. That's all fine and good. Nothing particularly exciting. I could what if this I could deploy it. Um, but we did mention that we have parity with ARM templates and one of the big things that we have with parity is loops. And so in this case, I don't just want one website, I want multiple websites. So let's create a little array for ourselves. So I'm gonna use the var keyword, which is just a variable. And I'm gonna call this websites. And it's gonna be equal to an array and the array is gonna have a set of objects. And the objects are gonna have two properties. Uh, name, uh, we're going to call this fancy, and it's going to have the tag of latest. And then we're going to have another one uh, called plain, and this is going to have a tag of plain text. So this will help us have two different images that we deploy, and we can, we'll be able to tell the difference between the two websites. And now we're going to modify our module so that we use the looping syntax. So I'm going to add some brackets here and that tells bicep that this is an array and I'm going to start typing for site in websites colon. And so this is the loop syntax. It's pretty simple. Um, it's using that websites array that we just set up here and then site is how we reference each object as we iterate through it. So let's um, make this, this name unique with some string interpolation. So we'll do site.name here, and then suffix with site deploy. Uh, the name prefix, we're gonna make site.name as well. And the image we're gonna leave alone, we wanna use the same image, but we wanna dynamically set the tag. So we're gonna do site.tag. And now we have a looped module that's ready to go. Um, so we can actually deploy this right now and let's do that and see what we get. Uh, we're gonna do az deployment sub create again. Let's actually just go up here. I'll get rid of the confirm because I'm confident that this is gonna deploy and we will start this deployment. Um, this is gonna take a little bit, um, so we'll, we'll wait and talk through it as that's happening. Uh, let's switch over to the Azure portal and we'll take a look at how this deployment is going. Okay, we have our resource group here, so let's take a look at our resource group. And now we're gonna wait for some resources to show up. Here's our app service plan that's been created, and now we're just waiting for our websites to be stood up as well. Okay, so we see our fancy site loaded. We have some fancy HTML here. Look at how fancy it is. There it is our plain text site. So that's how easy it is to, to iterate through a list and get many instances of a single resource, um, all with a relatively simple syntax. So just in about 36 lines, we did the app plan, we did the websites, we did multiple websites. Okay, so that was, was Bicep 0.3. There's lots of other 0.3 features that you should go check out. All that information is available uh, in the repo. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, the project is public, the extension is public. You can try and you can contribute today. Um, so if you have the most recent version of Azure CLI or Azure PowerShell, um, you can go and get those, uh, or you, you should already have basically BICEP integration ready to go, so you can start using these commands. Um, and then the BICEP uh, VS Code extension in the marketplace is also already available, so you can go and install that really easily and get started. Um, and if you do want to contribute, uh, you can just go to the repo, there's a contribution guide, whether it's docs or examples or opening up issues or submitting PRs, um, whatever contributions you're able to contribute, we, we greatly, greatly appreciate. Um, and then you can follow the, our Twitter account. Uh, we're pretty good about posting things there and, and keeping you in the know. So that's a good way to, to stay current as well. Um, we also have this uh, ARM and, and Project Bicep 
uh, customer community. Um, so you can join that community. That's just another place to, to post questions and get answers from, from ourselves, but also um, other people in the same community uh, may be able to answer your questions. So you can join this at aka.ms slash arm meet and sign up is, is pretty straightforward. And lastly, we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for, for having us and allowing us to present BICEP to you. We hope you enjoyed that. Um, and then thank you, you know, to the community that has helped make BICEP um, a really thriving project, at least so far. I personally have just been completely blown away at the, the contributions that we've seen. Uh, every time I, I see a PR, I just, I just can't believe it. Um, so thank you for all the, the examples and the doc edits and, and the PRs that, that you've been doing and, and the, the community education that I've seen as well. Um, so truly, truly from the bottom of our hearts, uh, thank you for that. And I hope you have a good rest of your summit. We'll stick around to, to answer some questions. Thanks.